we get viewer mail asking different questions and we like to help out people whenever we can. There is a guy who emailed us about his gym. He has a workout facility and he's having a little bit of financial difficulty right now. He doesn't want me to go into the name of his club or his name because he doesn't want his gym patrons to think that things are in financial trouble. But he is looking for a green solution for his gym to either help with a promotional idea, get some publicity, or to actually lower his utility cost. And I am sitting on my conversion bike that I actually did. And one idea that gyms could do is they could take and get a series of bikes that their gym patrons hop on where they actually have it hooked up instead of having just a magnetic resistance that all it does is act like a brake pad and create heat, they could actually be turning generators creating an electrical current. Now you're not going to power a gym, you're not going to power a lot of stuff with it. You're going to do a couple hundred watts at a time for a short period, short duration. But you can put that back into the grid with a grid tie inverter and you could also with some really cool meters you could actually see, you could see how many kilowatt hours your gym patrons are producing. So I'm going to be showing you this right now. It is a geared scooter motor. This has a really good gear ratio here. So when you add it to this gear ratio, you just turn this and this enables you to produce um, some nice voltage. So I have this voltage meter hooked up, I have the kilowatt meter hooked up, and I have a grid tight inverter hooked up. There's no batteries to this. We're going directly from this to that. These grid tie inverters need to work between um, 14 volts, they start producing the voltage, up to 35 volts. Now this, the thing you need to know about the grid tie inverters is that if you hook them to a battery, whatever, these are different than regular inverters. Don't use a regular inverter, this is a grid tie inverter. You cannot electrocute a linesman if the power goes out. When there's no power, these do not work. These won't work if there's no electrical power that it detects in the line. They have circuitry in there that prevents that, but also your inverter didn't shut off. It would be trying to power a couple kilowatts of power in your house with 200 watts. It would destroy the inverter. It wouldn't last but a few seconds. When you say, consider that you're hooked to the neighborhood grid, everyone's appliances are going to try to draw power from this. It, it's virtually impossible to send that much power back with these. So, again, that's if these didn't have the island set up, which prevents that. These do have an island set up in there, which does detect voltage, and that's how they work. Without the island, they don't work, and they couldn't work without it. So, that's just a safety feature, and it's just a fact about these. So, you cannot back power and electrocute linesmen, that sort of thing. All right, so now we're going to get right to the video. All right, I have this hooked up. Now, when I pedal this, you're going to notice that if I go below the 14 volts, it doesn't, you won't see any watts over here. If I go above 35 volts, uh, you're not going to see any watts develop or generated either. So I have to go right in between, and you're going to hear whenever I pedal, you're going to hear the resistance in this pickup as this starts putting more watts back in because energy doesn't come for free. You can't just spin something and get tons of, you might, you get a lot of voltage, but you don't get any current. So this is going to show the current, the voltage and the current together. This, this is just going to show the voltage so I know to pedal faster or slower and uh, you'll see how tiring this can get. Okay, you're going to see, I don't know if you can see the green light on the grid tie inverter, but those lights need to start moving. So I'm below the voltage right now. I'm going to pick it up a little bit. You can see that they started clicking. That is 30 watts that I'm putting back into our house's grid. I found that about 24 volts is an ideal rate that you want to be at. You go above it, it tends to spike. and. It's actually getting a lot harder to pedal. So that's 65 watts. That's like a 65 watt light bulb, 70 watts.
Come on, 100. 105 watts. 106. All right, now it's spun free because I went over the voltage. Woo! So, at 100 watts, if I did that for 10 hours, that would be one kilowatt hour or about 11 cents in electricity. So that'll give you some appreciation of what uh, the electric company powers into your house. This is a neat little gadget if you are need to store some power for some laptops and that sort of thing. This will work. You can actually get some good power if, you, if you're very, very efficient. As far as something for a gym, this would be a really good idea because there are some very advanced uh, electrical digital metering systems that you can see the total kilowatt hours. You might even be able to work with the power company on a promotional deal with it. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.